Hi, my name is Liz Hathaway and this is my astrological look at the week ahead. And that is the week starting Monday 28th of December 2020, the last week of this momentous year where we've been ploughing through this strange Saturn-Pluto territory, this Capricorn landscape, which has been so bare and so cold and unfriendly at times, it's been almost unthinkable and unimaginable. And yet at the same time, we forged new communities, found new friends, worked online. It's been incredibly innovative in many ways as well. We've reassessed our idea of time. We no longer have that sort of, you know, um, obedience to the clock or less of it because there's less things going on. So there's less things that we have to keep up with. There's less things to do. It's been a really strange, strange year. So we're actually at the end of it. We really are. We've had Jupiter conjunct Saturn um, last week in Aquarius. And just a few days later, we had in the UK anyway, we got the Brexit deal came out on the 24th, which was pretty amazing because really this whole Brexit thing in the UK has been going on for years. I mean, I think it was 2016, the referendum, but it was dominating British politics, politics for a decade before that. So in that respect, it's great it's done and dusted and it's done and dusted with Jupiter and Saturn, not in the sort of last gasps of Capricorn, but in this new air sign, which is Aquarius about forging new relationships, new ideas, birthing new ideas, finding new friends. And I think both for the EU and the UK, as above, so below, this is a new step, a new phase in relationships. So, you know, as a Brit living in Europe, I think, you know, at least it's over and we can move on to the next chapter, which is great. Talking about the next chapter on Thursday, I will be giving my review of 2021, my bird's eye view of 2021. So check that out. I hope to have it online on Thursday. But just for now, let's dive into this sort of last um, chapter of uh, 2020. This, we're in this kind of bridging week now where we move from you know, the old into this new, uh, this new era in a way that's birthing. Monday, Sun trying uh, Uranus. So if you've got loose ends you need to tie up, if there's things that you're behind with, Monday is a great day to shift mountains. Uranus is innovative, it's quick moving, even though it's in Taurus, and I don't, it still carries the quality of the planet is still there, that, and it's innovation in work, you know, breaking out of rats, breaking out of routines, and also finding new ways of doing things. You know, Earth can dig a hole for itself. Uranus is that helping hand that can say, have you thought of doing it this way, that way? Or So there's a trine movement. We can really get things ready for the next step, for this new year that's coming. Set our intentions. That's also something that Uranus can help us with. What really, what would be really great to do next year? What would change the landscape of my life if I did things like that? So looking for something that excites us as well, that we can Earth Tuesday, we've got the full moon in Cancer, full moon in 8 degrees 53 Cancer. What a great full moon, what a relief for the moon in Cancer not to have Saturn in Capricorn on the other side of the coin. It must be, oh, well, I mean, I'm a moon in Cancer, so yeah, it feels good, I can tell you. If we look at the previous full moon in Cancer, which was on the 10th of January 2020, so it was a lunar eclipse as well, and it was just a few days before the Jupiter uh, sorry, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn, Lun lunar eclipse, uh, moon in Cancer. You know, moon in Cancer wants to reach out, it wants to nurture, it wants to befriend, it wants to take care of, it wants to share warmth and emotional, it has, yeah, it wants to be emotionally involved in people's lives. You know, it matters to the moon in Cancer that there's some sort of emotional connectivity. And then you have, you know, sort of Saturn, last year it was almost, you know, that Saturn and Jupiter were almost exactly opposite the, 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 the eclipsed moon last year, uh, well, this year in 2020. So you get that sense of, you know, moving forward with all this feeling that the moon has when it's in Cancer. And, you know, you've got Saturn there, ring pass not, you know, you will not pass. So it was sort of almost like the writing on the wall, if you like, for what transpired through the course of 2020, where we were all forced to keep a distance and, you know, we're unable to share 
contact, skin to skin, emotional, not able to comfort people. It's been a very strange year in that respect. So that lunar eclipse, I think, last year, that full moon last year, was was kind of almost set in the setting the label, well, showing us what was to come. It was like a foreboding sort of eclipse in a way. Um, so now this full moon, a lot more relaxed. Uh, it will try Neptune on Wednesday, on the same day that Venus in Sag squares Neptune. So you've got these two traditionally sort of feminine planets, Venus and the moon, both engaging with Neptune, but in different ways. The trine moon is very proactive. So you get the sense of um, the giving pledge and wanting to help out and get out there and, you know, um, look after the lorry drivers who are stuck in Dover, you know, this kind of thing. It's that reaching out. Whereas Venus planet of love in Sagittarius, where it's about friendship, about shared philosophy of life, travel plans that we might be making together, um, re shared religious or, or other sort of spiritual um, ideas. Um, yeah, trust a big issue always with Venus and Sag. And then square Neptune. I mean, you know, freedom sometimes comes at a cost. That's what Neptune is. It's that sense of loss and longing. And the square is about idealism. It's about the ideal as opposed to the real. What we would wish to have in the relationship, what we long for, but is somehow not there in the material embodiment of the person we are with. So it's kind of, it's very highly romantic, but also quite a troublesome square because it's not about what's right in front of us, but what we imagine it could be or should be. Neptune's good at doing that, yeah? creating this sort of illusion of something and setting and, and the quest in Venus and Sag is going to chase after it. Uh, coming into the uh, later in the week, on, on, on Thursday, Moon moves into Leo. And on Friday, she's opposite Jupiter. But Friday the 1st, we also have Mercury in Capricorn, sextile in Neptune and Pisces. It's a great sextile. Of course, 1st of January, as we would expect, we'll have all these religious leaders, the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury. All these people usually come out and do these New Year messages and of hope and goodwill which go around the planet. But Mercury is in Capricorn, so you know there has to be some practicality in it. It's not just about words. Although words as well, you know, this is something that we could actually comfortably tie into a Mercury sextile. To Neptune is this recognition of the power of thought. Words can move, as Plotinus would say. Words have the power to move. Energy follows thought. First day of a new year. So, you know, where's our energy? What thoughts are we getting behind? Where are we channeling and where are we moving towards in twenty? 21 right it's a, it's a, it's a it's an interesting way to start the new year and then coming into saturday we have the moon in uh a leo still trining venus trining mars so we have a grand trine there in the weekend grand trine grand fire trine you know which um it's very active and i know like a lot of people are in you know sort of lockdowns and you know, the, but we can still get out and have a good walk and let our ideas flow and let our thoughts sort of spin around us and lift us up. And it's, it's reaching out, it's fire, it's inspirational, it's intuitive. So, I mean, this, this is at the end then of, uh, you know, the, the beginning for a part of 2021. So what a brilliant week. Happy New Year, everybody. Have a safe um, New Year as well because we've still got this COVID hanging over our heads, right? But still, we need to go in with that grand trine energy, that hope, you know, for things to come. Um, as I say, on Thursday, I'll be doing my review of uh, 2021, my bird's eye view. So do uh, check in and listen to that. And although you can't see his head, this is Frosty. So from Frosty and me, <laughs> Happy New Year.